Princess Diana went where the pain was, says the Diana Award CEO and now her sons are doing the same, exclusive. Dr. Tessie Ojo tells people that Prince William and Prince Harry really changed the trajectory of how we talk about mental health in the UK. During her life, Princess Diana went where the pain was and her sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, aren't afraid to do the same. That's according to Dr. Tessie Ojo, who is CEO of the Diana Award the only award bearing the late Princess of Wales name. Two years after her death following a car accident on August 31, 1997, the Diana Award was formed in 1999, and it is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. It's a cause that both William and Harry support. Hello viewers, please remember to subscribe and click on the notifications bell icon, so you will be notified whenever we upload new cookies about the British royal family. I think what you will see is the passion, the selflessness. In some senses, they say, I'm not going to give up, Ojo tells people at a September 23rd event for the Diana Award featuring her younger son, Harry, in New York City. She adds, it's so easy to pause, to stop and to say this is too big. It's too messy. I'm not going to get involved. And that's the kind of thing we saw with Princess Diana. She went where the pain was. And usually where the pain is, it's not always comfortable. It's not easy. And that's what you see. You see that same value, that principle of we're going to go where the pain is, however uncomfortable this is. Prince William and Prince Harry arrive for the unveiling of a statue they commissioned of their mother Diana, Princess of Wales, in the sunken garden at Kensington Palace, on what would have been her 60th birthday on July 1, 2021 in London. Ojo points to William and Harry's formation in 2016 of Heads Together as a moment that really changed the trajectory of how we talk about mental health in the UK, she says. Kate Middleton also joined forces with the brothers to launch the campaign to end the stigma around mental health eight years ago. Ahead of Harry's participation in a panel discussion today alongside Ojo, and two recipients of the Diana Award, Kiara Rianti Utapi Jang, 18, of Indonesia, and Christina Williams, 27, of Jamaica, I think what we wanted him to bring was that same energy and really highlight why it's important that we don't sleepwalk into this crisis that we currently have, and that, actually, we're going to shift the dial, Ojo says of the conversation around mental health. Young people and young voices had to be at the center of it. And I think the power of someone like him is how they can amplify the voices of young people, and that's what we saw happen today. Williams, one of the award recipients, tells people that I think my impression of him, was that here is someone who is in a high-level role, who really cares about young people cares about our voices and our actions, she says. They say you never want to meet your heroes, but I met someone who I admire, and I am leaving the experience still maintaining that admiration, or even more admiration, to know that he really cares about the causes that he represents. The Diana Award recipients Kiara Rianti Utapi Jang of Indonesia, and Christina Williams of Jamaica sit on a panel with Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex and Dr. Tessie Ojo CB as they attend the 2024 Concordia Annual Summit in honor of the Diana Award in New York City on September 23, 2024. Of carrying the torch of Princess Diana's work after her death, Williams says Harry is carrying it bravely, I think his mother will be very proud, because her legacy is the support of young people, Williams adds. Her legacy is that young people can be the change that they want to see in the world. And through him carrying on the work and being such a vanguard or a protector of her legacy, he's creating a new legacy of young people. Of young people who are able to change their world, their environment by using their voices. During the panel discussion, Harry, 40, told Jang and Williams, I applaud you for certainly, at, your age, to be on this stage, to have the confidence that you do, and to be able to speak as clearly and as passionately as you do. And I know that my mom would be incredibly proud of you guys not just you, but all of the award winners. The Diana Award was founded on Princess Diana's belief that young people have the power to change the world, 
and the charity exists to empower young people to make positive change by unlocking potential, creating opportunities and inspiring action. On September 23, the Diana Award launched an initiative called the Decade of Youth Wellbeing, that is a bold, ambitious and collaborative plan to harness the power, of, young people, like Christina and Chiara, to lead positive change, according to a release from the Diana Award. Of William and Harry, Ojo says of their involvement, we are so honored, and what a privilege to have both her sons who support this work, she tells people. And it is their mother's legacy. They are both immensely committed to driving change. And we know it's a privilege to have their support, and we will continue to work to make them proud and to keep their mother's legacy alive. The author of Revenge, Meghan, Harry and the War Between the Windsors, told Talk TV, the only thing she has got left, and I think that is her potential gold mine, is her autobiography. He added that although the move would certainly boost the couple's income, it could destroy any hopes of reconciliation. Bauer said, she has a very, very vivid imagination and she'll be able to spell out an amazing story to increase her income. His comments came after he claimed Meghan first came to London to boost her acting career. Bauer continued, the problem is, she isn't a great actress. Her acting career ended long before she arrived in London, that's why she came here. She couldn't find any more work after Suits. Although a memoir written by Meghan could provide a massive financial boon, one source told us weekly that it was unlikely she would write one. Meghan has transitioned from actress to royal to entrepreneur, they said. She's worn many hats, but she believes age and experience have prepared her for a bigger purpose in life. She's very happy with the role she's carved out. After Spare, Harry and Meghan realized, OK, we're ready to move on. We want to focus on our future. We can have meaning and importance separate from the lives we had previously. Meghan doesn't harbor any negative feelings. She just wants peace, and knows you can't find peace if you harbor resentments. Money experts have also pointed out that the Duke of Sussex may have missed a major opportunity to capitalize on his book after he confirmed he would not update Spare with new revelations in its paperback reissue. The decision not to update the book came as a shock to many as it is deemed an unusual move for an international bestseller. However, its October re-release could spark fresh tensions with Buckingham Palace as it is set to clash with King Charles's high-profile appearance at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Samoa. However, dispute the date, some experts have suggested that by choosing not to add new chapters, Harry could be attempting to extend an olive branch to his family. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like this video and drop comments. And most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.